Welcome to Technocracy News and Trends. I'm Patrick Wood. Well, Charles Hugh Smith nailed it. He said, There is no avenue left for advocacy, grievances, or redress in a system dominated by global corporations. Close quote. In the old feudal days, peasants with pitchforks and torches could assault the Lord's castle on a hill. Today, there is no castle, there isn't even a hill. Yet, we still have the same grievances, angst, and desires for peace, safety, and prosperity. Smith further wrote, quote, The reality is there is no avenue left for advocacy, grievances, or redress in a system dominated by global corporations. The castle on a hill doesn't exist. It is diffused all over the planet and well protected by the state minions controlled by neo-feudal corporate interests. Do you really think it's mere coincidence that small business growth has imploded in an era of corporate dominance? As I mentioned yesterday in Government's Change that Corporatocracy Endures, central banks dropping interest rates to near zero for financiers and corporations, sealed corporate dominance of finance and governance. There are few opportunities for small businesses when the financial and political structures serve neo-feudal corporate interests. Corporate power destroys democracy. That is the heart of neo-feudalism. Now, let me explain what happened here. In 1970, Zbigniew Brzezinski wrote a book between two ages, America's role in the technotronic era. Three years later, in 1973, Brzezinski teamed up with financier David Rockefeller to start the Trilateral Commission that was dedicated to, quote, fostering a new international economic order, close quote. Brzezinski explained in his book, quote, the nation state as a fundamental unit of man's organized life has ceased to be the principal creative force. International banks and multinational corporations are acting and planning in terms that are far in advance of the political concepts of the nation state. Anthony Sutton and I wrote Trilaterals Over Washington, Volume 1 and 2, and lectured extensively on this in the late 1970s and early 1980s. It's too bad that more people didn't listen to us back then, but the establishment made sure that we were thoroughly marginalized and discredited. In fact, the nation's largest book chain at the time, B. Dalton Booksellers, blatantly blacklisted our books by sending out a memo to all their stores that stated, quote, Trilatos over Washington is out of print and the publisher is out of business, close quote. Neither was true, but it killed our sales. So what part of Brzezinski's statement above is unclear? Was Between Two Ages some sort of literary equivalent to Hitler's Mein Kampf, in which he laid out the elite's plans in terms so clear that nobody would believe them? Whatever the case, Brzezinski envisioned the, quote, ult ultimate solution in his carefully defined technotronic era. Well, what is the technotronic era? Plain and simple, it is a vision rooted in historic technocracy from the 1930s. It is also the resurrection of feudalism with many new twists thanks to advanced technology. Thus, the term neo-feudalism fits technocracy, or technotronic, perfectly. A few own all the resources and then tell everyone else what they can or can't do on planet Earth. In 1938, the Technocrat magazine defined technocracy as follows. Quote, technocracy is the science of social engineering, the scientific operation of the entire social mechanism to produce and distribute goods and services to the entire population, close quote. Well, this is exactly what's happening today. 
social engineers working with global corporations to take over the entire economic and social landscape. Thus, society is being scientifically re-engineered to serve the corporate lords. The old-fashioned terms of supply and demand simply don't apply anymore. Consumer demand is artificially manipulated to soak up whatever global corporations decide they want to manufacture. In other words, technocracy is a complete takeover of both the means of production and consumption, a feat never before attempted or achieved in the history of the world. You might never have heard of technocracy before, but you can feel the manacle of scientific dictatorship tightening around your neck. In my opinion, this is why Britain recently voted to leave the European Union, which is openly called a technocracy in the European press, by the way. This is also why Trumpism has accelerated in America. Simply put, people don't have to understand the cause in order to feel the pain. Oh, would that there was a castle on a hill that we could assault and demand that our grievances be heard. However, because technocracy and technocrats are th so thoroughly infused into society, institutions, and the corporate culture, it is impossible to hold their feet to the fire. Global scholar Dr. Parag Khanna confirmed this thinking in his recent book, Connectography. He writes, We are building this global society without a global leader. Global order is no longer something that can be dictated or controlled from the top down. Globalization is itself the order. Folks, this is profound. This is why it is so important to stop technocracy before it takes over our nation completely. We could overthrow a communist dictatorship. We could overthrow a fascist dictatorship. But we cannot overthrow a system of scientific dictatorship like technocracy. Just listen to the historical evidence. Aldous Huxley, who wrote the book Brave New World in 1932, the same year that technocracy was housed at Columbia University, followed up 26 years later in a 1958 book, Brave New World Revisited. He was again writing about technocracy. This is a direct quote from his book. The older dictators fell because they could never supply their subjects with enough bread, enough circuses, enough miracles and mysteries. Under a scientific dictatorship, education will really work, with the result that most men and women will grow up to love their servitude and will never dream of revolution. There seems to be no good reason why a thoroughly scientific dictatorship should ever be overthrown. So you see, my friends, that our situation today is dire. Global corporations are growing stronger and larger every day. The global investment bubbles created by the central banks over the last few years are threatening to kill capitalism and free enterprise once and for all. Our political system is about ready to fly apart into a million pieces. And lastly, the massive surveillance of all citizens and all activities is almost complete. Such are the birth pangs of scientific dictatorship. If we do not stop it now, it will close the door on liberty and freedom for decades to come. Now listen, don't sit back and wait for someone else to stop it. You need to personally get involved. Talk to people. Distribute copies of Technocracy Rising. Hold small meetings in your local neighborhood. Share stories from Technocracy News. Invest in the marketing fund for Technocracy News to spread the word. Some will undoubtedly say, well, it's too late to do anything, and they could be right. But the spirit of America is bigger 
than that. The America that we know and love was originally built against all odds. Since then, many tens of thousands of Americans gave all they had and some their very lives to defend our republic, liberty, and freedom. Truly, the spirit of America is never give up. So I urge you to learn everything that you can about technocracy, what it looks like, what it thinks like, what it feels like. You can't fight an enemy you don't know. Then make a plan and take action. Start with your local community. If you don't know what to do, then take our Citizen Ninja training for activists at localactivist.org. You can make a difference. I'm Patrick Wood. This is Technocracy News and Trends. Thank you.